when it's quite dark in there. When I first released this video, I was actually contacted by the group that uh, take care of this church and churchyard. And I was asked to take this video down basically because we do see human remains here. Um, but I stood my ground. I refused to take it down. I basically said to him, if you are not happy, you need to cover up the human remains and um, there was no signs to say no photographs, no videos. Um, it's a public area. And uh, so this is the video and I hope you enjoy it. It was a beautiful place and we were looked after by two very, very nice gentlemen who offered us a tour of the area. So this is the video. Enjoy. That may just be used as a, a storage room. But we also have crypts and vaults here as well. And you can see some of them there, along there. Now this is absolutely gorgeous, look at that. So where do we start? Let's take a walk down along here, I think. As I said, I've been watching this church and graveyard for a while and really wanting to video it. Um, it's two and a half hours drive from home. You can hear the wood pigeon there. Let's have a look, see what's down here first. Well, it's quite dark in there. So I'm actually going to get my torch Those are skulls and bones. And if I can get my gimbal to move across and around. And there as well. I have my gimbal. I have my gimbal on a, an extension. So you can see there we have more bones. Skulls. And actually up at the top there, another little area, if we can get the, the gimbal to work with me. We've even more. And more up there at the top. And just down here then again, just to show you. more skulls there you actually see two quite clear you can see that is a full skull and you can actually see on this one if my camera will adjust for me it's quite hard to you can actually see his lower or his top jaw actually looks like they have teeth now there is something wrote here and it looks like it says D G. It looks like eight, you know, one there. D O M. Not actually a hundred percent sure. Eight, you know, one anyway. D G. Something, or maybe. But we might pick that up. A little better in edit. The torch is playing up a little bit. 1801 there anyway. 
so that was quite interesting. It looks like we've three maybe headstones there. All those headstones up along. As I say, I'm using a kind of a, a Bluetooth mic. So I'm really hoping that the sound is a bit better and the audio is not picking up the wind. We have another crypt there. It seems to be completely closed up. Another one here. Looks like an iron door with a, a bolt. There is writing up at the top. Looks like George. Seems to say George up there, but you can see there's an urn right up at the top. Uh, George Harris or Harris of this area who something, we can't really read it. And is 1797 is the date. I'm sorry now that torch is just not really helping much, but uh, I'm not sure whether we can actually peep inside here. Oh, we can. We've just left now. I don't know whether it'll pick it up. It's so dark in there. There's actually open coffins. We have so much. You can see the, the iron there. My phone is not really playing ball at the moment. Now, hold on. We can see them there. Wow. Now, there's all coffins, all broken, unfortunately. All right, so hopefully you got some sort of a, a look inside the crypt. It's actually really nicely done. You can see there, there's a chain and a lock. A little wall at the side. That beautiful urn up top. I'm just going to turn around, go back up these little steps. It looks to me like at some stage there was a gate. Look at that. Absolutely gorgeous. And the, the church or the church tower in the background. Now that brings us along here. Wow, look at that. This tomb was erected by Mary, widow of Edward O'Grady, Esquire of Stevens Green, Dublin, for him and their immediate descendants, 1838, just wrote above the door. Now have a look at that for a lock. Isn't that amazing? And these fabulous wooden doors, but they almost look like they're iron. Now I'm going to pause the video for a second. I'm going to put my gimbal up high and we'll see if we can see anything. So this mausoleum um, is 1838 for Edward O'Grady. It's the family burial tomb of Edward Smith O'Grady and his wife Mary O'Grady. His son, Sergeant Edward Stammer O'Grady, was interred here in 1897, while under 30 years of age. He was elected sergeant to Mercer's Hospital and there enjoyed a distinguished career until his death. Restoration of the mausoleum was completed in 2013. And that's just, we were able to kind of just look in there and I've read the plaque above the door, but it is absolutely gorgeous. Now there is a man in the cemetery strimming at the moment. So you're going to have to excuse the audio for now, but I think we'll take a walk along this way and have a look at some more. So I'm going to just walk around here. As I said, the caretaker is strimming away, which is good to see. Now that must be something in there as well. It's all 
blocked up and there's possibly one here and one directly behind it. You might notice it there, but just look at that, isn't it gorgeous? With lovely stained glass windows there as well. So we'll keep going this way. Interesting. And uh, as far as I know, there is a record of most of the graves in here. That is where we've seen full skeletal remains. Thomas Ryan of the island in memory of his beloved father Patrick Ryan. That looks like it's a, a new headstone erected there. But just look at this. It's such a, a beautiful place and unfortunately this man is cutting the grass here. This says 17 36 I'd say no hold on uh, died the year 17 that's strange 36 aged 21 but look the way it is spelt who died D-Y-E-D -E Patrick really it looks like but I think that's 1736 there so very old There's the man strimming away. Look at this one. They're all my most like shells. A beautiful cross. I mean, we can't read them all, but I'm just giving you an idea and all the headstones and how beautiful it is. A lot of these probably, it looks like you just can't read them at all, really. Look at that. He stopped there for a second, but you can see that he's done all this area. So a lot of work um, he's taken on with a tree down there. Look at this. I mean, the church is absolutely gorgeous. I'm presuming it is a, a working church. But how amazing was it to actually find, you know, bones, full skeletons. This is Thomas, Reverend Thomas, I think. And I don't see, oh, 1820. And I can't really make that out. Sometimes the marble doesn't really hold up great. Eighteen thirteen. Just look at what we're looking at here. That big old tree. That gorgeous red door. It's not just beautiful. You can see a lot of the the headstones are full of lichen. Now I know when I seen this online, this was full of like red, bright red ivy. It was absolutely beautiful. Reverend 1861 it looks like and I'm kind of walking back around to where that gentleman is busy at work something else here wow we've another crypt wow look at this Look at above the door there. A 
Now that looks like to me like a coat of arms or is it the crest? It's the O'Grady family mausoleum and it's wrote just under the crest there with the lines. So one of those buried in there is Standish O'Grady. He was chief baron of Gullamore and Rock Spartan House. Standish was a lawyer and a contemporary of Daniel O'Connell. His promotion in the legal profession was rapid and in 1803 he was appointed to Attorney General for Ireland. Subsequently, he was the leading officer for the Crown during the prosecution for treason of Robert Emmett. The government was highly impressed with his conduct of the case and as a result promoted him to Chief Baron of His Majesty's Court of Exchequer. He was again honoured in 1831 when he was raised to the peerage as Viscount. In legal history of the time, he was viewed as a humorist and as a fairly rough character. Locally, his reputation for imposing the death penalty as punishment for trivial offences grew and so he became known as the Bloody Judge. In local folklore, it is said that Bloody Judge condemned a priest to death in Clonmel. The condemned priest cursed O'Grady by saying, may you never die. Later, he suffered from paralysis and it is said that the skin rotted off his body. During this time, his greatest wish was to die. But it was not until Father O'Grady from Bruff prayed over him that he died. His body lay in state for a week in a spacious library in Roxbarton, awaiting the nobility of Ireland to assemble at the funeral. The body was interred here in the O'Grady vault. So this is a little tour we got uh, by these two local gentlemen and he has brought me here. Now this reads, John Murphy died the 11th day of October 1784, aged 219 years. May the Lord have mercy on his soul. How amazing is that? Look at this one. The angel face is on it. Oh yeah, yeah. That's gorgeous as well. Cherubs, they call it. Cherubs, yeah. It nice 1777. Oh, yeah. Oh, look at that. It's the crucifixion, yeah. The pliers, the ladder, the soldiers. 30 pieces of silver. Yeah. The angel of death. What's the name of the lad that does the ones that make Dennis the, Cullen Dennis and Jay Byrne. And Jay Byrne. The writing then is beautiful. The that them. Uh, and to cut that with a chisel. Oh, can you imagine? Yeah. Yeah. 1828. Oh, yeah. Well, actually, well, one of them. Oh, yeah. yeah. Jesus, like, like, there was no, there was really no hit sons in Ireland. In hit oh, sons yeah. didn't become popular in Ireland until the 1950s. Yeah. So people couldn't afford them. Wow, look at that. And then before, before the, the 1800s end. with the penal laws, you weren't allowed to put up a son or not. Go away. My goodness. No. So we have been brought to here and uh, this is a rich presence of Arma Christi on this headstone. Um, objects associated with Jesus' death on the cross. Note the presence of the winged God, the Father or guardian angel, cherubs left and right, three spears, a cockerel, three nails, hammer, Pinchers, ladder, 30 pieces of silver, a chalice, angel of death, hourglass, day of judgment, an angel with trumpet and scales. Unfortunately, the light doesn't really pick it all up, but in person, this is just stunning. I do, just down, down there. that way. If you look at the left hand side of it, where you look at it, there's a date on it. Six okay, years. brilliant. Latin writing. I might go this way actually. Now guys, when I tell you this here, it's going to blow your mind. There's a man that holds the key. We got in there. And we got in at the one right down at the bottom. Now, I'm not allowed to video it, um, but just iron coffins and, <coughs> excuse me, remains. And it's just fantastic history there. Um, 
this video is kind of all over the place because this man came out of his home to to show us. So, as I said, we got into the mausoleums and the gentleman that held the key also kind of brought us around the cemetery just to show us um, a few of the more historical graves. So the video is slightly all over the place. Um, but he also told me to come down here and have a look at this altar too. Now, this is a tour de force amid the many wonders of St. John's graveyard. In 1615, Sir Thomas Brown undertook the chancel of St. John's. This classical altar tomb is dated 1618 and is the likely result. It served as the main altar in the earlier church. It may possibly have been a wedding gift to E.B. and M.D., which would eventually become their final resting place. The left panel shows the crucifixion. Behold the man. The blessed have held the middle. The scroll surrounding the shield symbol on the left. Now, this is all in Latin, but it's inscribed. Let them follow her footsteps if they are wise. The smaller scrolls give biblical quotations. The plint reads, Behold, he is now ashes, who was once generous. Removed to its present position and partly covered when the old church was being demolished, it has been hidden for 150 years and it's so well preserved and it's a rare work of art here at St. John's. It's actually 1618. I just found it. 1618. Now that is definitely all Latin. But that is fantastic. That is amazing. And I have kind of clipped this video on and off. I was told that that big structure there, that tower, if you could call it, has the bell inside. So it's a bell tower, really. And he got us into the church. This is the O'Grady Crypt, 1866. Standish de Courcy O'Grady, 1829 to 1901. And his descendants are buried here. Built in 1866 for his wife, Charlotte Powell Houghton who died in childbirth, as we discussed earlier on. And uh, just at the top of the crypt, it says, um, wounded, not conquered. How fantastic. Those rails, there's a little gate even for it. Just fantastic. Tomb there. I'm actually going down here. We actually got into that mausoleum as well. There's several, um, <clears throat> excuse me, several coffins in there. Places full of history. And uh, I'm just going to edit it the best I can because we were going around talking to the two gentlemen that kindly brought us in and showed us inside the mausoleum. Or mausoleums, I should say. The bloody judge was one of them. And uh, just, just, it's just amazing. This is better than what I thought. And uh, just a stunning, stunning place full of history. And uh, I can't believe what we have seen today. It's just outstanding. I just hope that the audio is much better with this mic. It's run off Bluetooth. 1777 there. I mean, you could spend forever there. But as I said, for the last two years, they have been documenting every headstone. Uh, they've used a mirror to kind of pick up the... The writing and uh, you know that must have been very hard work but I just can't get over the beauty of that church that beautiful red door and as I said it goes right up that tower goes right up and uh, the bell is situated up in that so guys 
With that being said, from Limerick, take care, God bless, and I'll talk to you soon.